So we left off talking about the different versions of the HLA-A gene one could inherit, so the different alleles, and there are many different versions. And those alleles make different allotypes, and those allotypes can present different peptides. And the reason that it's advantageous to present different peptides is the more different peptides you can present, the higher the chance that you're going to have a T cell with a T cell receptor that will bind one of those peptides. So the more peptides we can present to the immune system, specifically to T cells, the better. So right now it looks like we can make two different versions of MHE class one. And in fact, there's more versions that there are more versions that you can make. How is that possible? Because there are multiple versions of the HLA-A genes on chromosome six. So we introduced HLA-A. Well, it turns out there's also a gene called HLA-B and a gene called HLA-C, also on chromosome six. What do these genes do? They do the same thing as HLA-A. So HLA-B gene, that's going to make a protein that's going to be the alpha chain of an MHC class one molecule. And you have two copies of the HLA-B gene, which means you can make two different HLA-B allotypes. Same thing with version C. HLA-C gene, one copy is going to, uh, one allele is going to make one HLA-C allotype. The other allele will make another allotype. So now, looking at that cell at the bottom, instead of being able to present two different types of peptides, we can at most present six different types of peptides. The more peptides we can present to the immune system, the more different peptides, the higher the chances we're going to have a T-cell receptor that recognizes these peptides. So the fact that there are multiple genes um, that code for MHE class 1 alpha chain molecules is referred to as the fact that there is a gene family. There are multiple similar genes that code for the same type of protein. So all of these genes, HLA-A, HLA-B, and HLA-C, they all code for the alpha chain of MHG class 1 molecules. And that's great because we want to present as many peptides as possible. So this gives us diversity in our MHG class 1 molecules but that diversity doesn't come from gene rearrangement, such as what can happen for the T cell receptor alpha chain or beta chain or the heavy chain or light chain of immunoglobulin. Diversity comes from inheriting different possible alleles and the fact that there are a gene families that we inherit as well. So now let's talk about the fact that you can make many different MHG1 proteins on your surface of your cells. And we use this term now, isoforms, talking about the, all the different versions that you have present on your cells. So each version is an allotype, and uh, so allotypes and isoforms, those uh, terms are interchangeable at this point here. But if you look at uh, one of your cells covered in MHE ones there are different forms of MHE, different isoforms of MHE class one present on your cells. Again, the more different forms you have, the better. And so we can code for up to six different MHG1 isoforms. Um, and these genes, HLA, A, B, and C, um, have this same thing going on where there are lots of different versions or lots of different alleles of each of these genes. So for example, HLA-B, uh, one allele of HLA-B, it's got a name 2705. So it's going to encode for a protein, which we would refer to as HLA-B star 2705. And that would be one of your HLA class one or MHE class one molecules. Um, so let's examine what the advantage is of having multiple MHC one genes. So again, let's go back to um, that infected cell that we saw in the last video. So there's a viral protein and it's chopped up by the proteasome. Peptides are sent into the ER. The more peptides we can present to the T cells, the higher the chances we can identify the cells infected and activate the immune system. So we know we inherited HLA-A0201 and A0301. And those are peptide binding motifs. So now we introduced another um, allotype 
HLA B2705. I'm going to tell you now that has a peptide binding motif that binds with anchor residues of arginine at position 2 and arginine at position 9. So if there are any peptides that have an arginine at position 2 and 9, those will get loaded and presented to helper T cells. And it just so happens that there is one. So the uh, reason for having many versions of genes that code for MHE1 molecules is the more versions we have, the more peptides we can present. Right? So going back to this um, figure here, we have uh, multiple copies of the HLA -A genes, HLA -A, HLA genes, A, B, and C. So it's great that we can present lots of different peptides. Um, going back to this concept of alleles, different versions of these genes, same thing with HLA B and C as with A. There are many different versions. So for HLA B, scientists have identified over 2,500 allotypes of HLA B, which means they, there are over 2,500 alleles of HLA B. Uh, again, you only inherit two. You inherit one on your maternal and one on the paternal chromosome. So the versions that you have are dictated by your genetics, but in the human population, there are many, there are thousands of different versions of HLA-B. HLA-C, same thing. HLA-C codes for the um, alpha chain of MHC class 1. So it's got to present peptides as well. And same thing, there are many different versions of HLA-C. And all the different ver the old versions might differ in their peptide binding motif. Over 1,500 versions of HLA-C. So the, um, H the MHC class 1 genes, we refer to them as being highly polymorphic. So polymorphic refers to the fact that there are many versions of this gene. So polymorphic, um, we're, now we're getting into genetics. So let's talk a little bit about genetics and polymorphic. Um, if you recall from basic genetics, um, a lot of Punnett squares, a lot of genetics problems start out with a simple um, one gene, two allele um, scenario. So let's say we have a gene and there are two possible alleles. There's big T and little t. So if this is on an autosome, then we talk about which versions do you inherit. Do you inherit two copies of big T? So that would be homozygous for the dominant version. Or do you inherit uh, two copies of little t allele? That would be uh, homozygous recessive. Or do you inherit one copy of each? That would be heterozygous. So a lot of the genetics that you've covered previously is one gene, two alleles, very simple, homozygous or heterozygous, dominant and recessive. But with MHE genes, these HLA genes, it's more complicated than that. So first of all, it's not two alleles, it's a thousand alleles. It's over 1900 alleles for HLAA. So that's one thing. Again, you only inherit two versions of the HLAA gene, right? One maternal, one paternal. So, but there are over 1,900 in the human population. Again, the ones you inherit are dictated by um, your uh, genetics. So, um, you can be heterozygous for the HLAAs, or Bs or Cs, or you could be homozygous. Now, actually, it's very rare to be homozygous because um, the odds of your parents contributing the exact same HLA-A allele, uh, it's low just because there are so many HLA alleles in the population. It's still possible, especially if your parents are either related or they come from a similar ethnic group. Um, they're more likely to share HLA alleles in that population. Uh, whereas uh, if your parents come from different, widely different genetic backgrounds, they are more likely to contribute a different HLA-A allele. Why is it advantageous to be heterozygous in this condition? Well, remember, these genes code for proteins that present peptides. So we talked about the HLA-A gene um, allele version 0201 presenting with a peptide binding motif 
of L and V at the anchor residues, and 3001, that allele presents, uh, makes a protein that presents with peptides, a uh, binding motif of phenylalanine at position 2 and 9. So if you're heterozygous and you can present different peptides, the more peptides you can present, the better, because you have a higher chance of having a T cell recognizing one of those peptides. If, on the other hand, you are heterozygous, I'm sorry, homozygous, let's say for 0201, well, then you could only present peptides with um, anchor residues of leucine and valine. So the number of different peptides you could present is lower if you're homozygous for any specific HLA A gene. But again, most people are not homozygous. Most people are heterozygous. And the reason why they are is because there are so many different HLA-A alleles in the human population. So uh, in this case, there is a heterozygous advantage. And when you talk about evolution, um, there are advantages to being heterozygous for certain, certain genes. HLA genes are definitely one where you want to be heterozygous. Because if you're homozygous, you will present fewer peptides, which means you are more likely to um, not present, not activate your immune system against pathogens. So let's go back to the ER and talk about the fact that being heterozygous here is good because you can load lots of different peptides and being homozygous, not so good. So let's say instead of, um, let's a heterozygous person who has two different versions of HLAA can present these different peptides. But let's say you're not, um, heterozygous, let's say you're homozygous for 0201, well now you can only present peptides with leucine and valine, you can't present peptides with anchor residues phenylalanine, phenylalanine, and so the number of peptides you can uh, present is diminished. And that's going to diminish the ability of your immune system to recognize an infection. So that brings us to the end of talking about the MHE class 1 gene. And it's not just one gene, it's many genes, and it's many versions of the genes. So what we've been talking a lot about is how um, our cells have MHG diversity. And it's good to be diverse in this respect because the more different peptides you can present, the higher your chances of having a T cell recognize a peptide. So the MHG diversity comes from really two uh, different um, factors. One is that there's a gene family of MHG uh, genes. So there's HLA-A and B and C. If we only had HLA-A, then we could only possibly present two different um, families of peptides. But we have HLA-A and HLA-B and HLA-C. So in fact, the maximum uh, number of different peptides you could present is now it, we're up to six different uh, peptide presentation molecules, so each of them hopefully with different peptide binding motifs. So having multiple genes that make the same functional protein gives you diversity in your ability to present peptides. Secondly, um, MHG genes are highly polymorphic. There are many different versions you can inherit. If there were very few versions of MHG genes, if there were few alleles, you know, if there are only two alleles, then it's actually very unlikely you would be heterozygous. If there were 10 alleles, well, maybe it'd be a better chance that you were home heterozygous. If there's 100 alleles, 1,000 alleles. And for all of these, there are over 1,000 alleles um, that one could inherit in your genes. So these are highly polymorphic genes. And again, from an evolutionary point of view, um, it is advantageous to be heterozygous in these genes because the heterozygous um, ability allows you to present more different peptides to the immune system.